Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Our very special guest here today to talk about the breaking news, uh, Claire Lopez. She's an internationally known expert in security policies. She's a writer. She's a former big shot with the United States government, formerly CIA. She knows a little bit about everything. Welcome, Claire. Thank you, Barry. You, uh, you do me uh, too much honor. Well, let's, let's talk about the news that just came out. Joe Biden has picked Kamala Harris. Under intense pressure from the very progressive wing of the Democrat Party, he was ordered by those on high to pick a woman and an African-American woman. How does Kamala Harris fit into that? Well, she very definitely is a woman, um, but she's certainly not African-American. Uh, one of her parents is from Southeast Asia of Indian heritage, and the other from Jamaica. So um, African-American is not quite um, the right definition there, but I guess uh, they're, they're happy with their pick. Are they going to be, and when I say they, I mean the Democrat establishment, are they going to be um, reminded by the public that this woman, while she looks darker than, well, say, you are, um, is she black enough in an African sense, or is that going to be forgotten tomorrow? You know, I really think that will be forgotten tomorrow. They're going to be pleased with the pick. Um, uh, she, she fits well enough um, for, for their definition, I guess. Interesting. I, I, and I agree with you on that. So here's, here's my first question in terms of what's going to be thrown at her. As everybody knows the story, and I'll add a personal slant to it, uh, some people may know that I served in a number of administrations in uh, California, working directly for a number of governors of California. Um, most famously, Arnold Schwarzenegger was my boss. And I reported directly to his office running a very large financial uh, district for the state of California. And I got to know a, a gentleman named Willie Brown, who was the head of basically everything Democrat in the state of California. Among other jobs, he was the longtime mayor of San Francisco. He wrote a book in which he bragged about his secret lover, who he promoted because they were, well, having sex. And that secret lover was Kamala Harris. What can you tell us about that story? Well, uh, you, you certainly have more direct um, uh, you know, experience uh, with that whole situation, but I'll say this. Um, if we look uh, at the Marxist communist playbook, for example, in writings by former FBI agent W. Cleon Skousen, if we look at pronouncements um, and statements out of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is definitively Marxist, we can see that there is very little regard for what most of us would think of as traditional Judeo-Christian based Western morality. As a matter of fact, the Black Lives Matter movement um, statement that is on its website and an organization uh, or umbrella organization which Kamala Harris has explicitly endorsed, that statement on the BLM website says specifically that uh, it, it uh, supports uh, the destruction of the nuclear family. So um, this is where the communist Marxist BLM leftists are dragging the Democratic Party, um, I wonder how many traditional liberal um, Democrats of, 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 of the old sort uh, will be willing to go along. Well, that's an interesting take on it. And, and let's add a second question, a second level of question to it, which is, Willie Brown also said repeatedly, Claire, that he promoted her to these positions of power and influence because they had a sexual relationship. Do you think the independents that aren't traditionally Democrat, there aren't traditionally Republican, they tend to vote people, 
more than party and policy more than party. Will those people in the middle that, as we all know, decide every presidential election, will they care? I think they will. You know, I think most Americans of whatever faith are good people and they abide by, or at least try to abide by, a set of morals and ethics that, that this contradicts at the most basic level. We can add to this, of course, that during the primary campaign among the Democratic uh, contenders for uh, the presidential candidate, which Biden eventually won, um, Kamala Harris um, said explicitly that she believed uh, the, uh, the female accuser of Joe Biden, who accused him of, um, of, of rape. And that she believed that candidate, uh, she believed that uh, that individual. So now she's willing to run as the vice presidential partner of someone she thinks is a sexual predator. I think a lot of Americans are going to have trouble with that. That's an interesting take on it. And here's here's the biggest question I think that Americans are going to ask themselves. I've been watching politics for a long time. I know you've been an expert around politics for a long time as well. I can't remember in my lifetime a vice presidential pick more important in American history because you have a presidential candidate that the majority of Americans, the majority of Americans, of Democrat, Republican, Independent, think won't finish out a four year term because he just doesn't seem all mentally there and seems that that, well, dementia is what some people are calling it, Alzheimer's other people or just limited capabilities mentally seem to be getting worse. You have a presidential candidate running with a vice president who many people think will fill out the term. So you have a candidate not like in the past where, oh, you know, the vice president, the vice president goes to things the president doesn't want to go to. He meets the second rate leaders of the world. He cuts ribbons. You know, he's a dignitary and a figurehead. Now you have a vice presidential candidate that very well will be the president should Joe Biden win. How important does that make her as a pick? Well, I think it's very important that we consider that. She is, I believe, about 22 years younger uh, than Joe Biden um, and obviously has her faculties all about her, unlike him. Um, you know, Joe Biden, in the few appearances that his handlers allow him to have, appears to us, and we are not medical experts of any sort, but appears to uh, the the observer, um, he appears to be slipping badly and rather quickly in terms of mental acuity, ability to string together sentences, not lose his train of thought in the middle. Um, it is at least a likelihood, um, at least a possibility, let's say, uh, that Kamala Harris, uh, were he, Joe Biden, to to win the presidency, uh, that she could well be the one to finish out the term. Exactly. Claire, tell people where they can find you, would you please? Yes, uh, I do not yet have a website, still having to work on that a bit, uh, but I am on social media. I am uh, at Claire M. Lopez on Facebook, on Parlay, uh, on Twitter, um, and uh, you can find my writing uh, and other videos like this one both at American Truth Project and at sites like uh, Sharia Crime Stoppers, the United West, the Citizens Commission on National Security, and a few more. You're amazing, and you're everywhere. The ubiquitous Claire Lopez, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And for those of you that haven't subscribed to our ATP text message alert system, please take out your cell phone and send the message truth to 88202, push send, you'll be automatically subscribed and get all of our shows directly on your cell phone, absolutely free. We never charge for content. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.